Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we choose to rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Amen. Come on, stand to your feet and give God a hand of praise. I think this is the day that the Lord has made, and we choose to rejoice and be glad in it. Even you out there in Facebook land, God is good even when we don't know he's being good to us. Amen. Amen. He woke us up this morning and given us another chance of eternal life. Somebody didn't wake up this morning, but he shook us and said, it's time to come and pray and work for my name. And we are here in the house this morning, and we're going to give God the highest praise. We're going to say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give God. Hallelujah. Give God. Hallelujah. Give God. Let us pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for this day. Lord God, we ask that you have your way in this service. Open up the floodgates of and let it rain down on us. In the mighty name of Jesus, we love you and we praise you. And we say amen. amen. We got this for our faith.
still trust in the Lord. Y'all sing with us. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord.
Father God, we have many in our congregation that are sick. One I heard this morning going through surgery right now. But you know all about it, oh gracious Father. You're the doctor above all doctors. Find faith right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh gracious Father, go to our brothers, oh gracious Father. That's going through an ideal on tomorrow, oh gracious Father. Touch him, oh gracious Father. Touch the one that's going to be working with him. Let him know, gracious Father, even before he goes into the operating room, that you go. And that you God all by yourself. If you allow him to go in, you can bring him out. Go with the reeds families all over this land and country. Bless those that are in our family, oh gracious Father. Bless those that's in the church family. Let them know, gracious Father, that you can be that little one for them. In the midnight hour, let them know, gracious Father, that you can come to people. When they feel lonely and feel all alone, let them know you can worship to them. And you can say, Peace! Mm. Peace be still. Whatever they're dealing with, oh gracious Father. And you can buy Satan. You can find whatever's going on in our lives. We can be peace over everything, oh gracious Father. Now, Master. Now, Master. On my way in, oh gracious Father. I can tell my step would be a little short. On my way in. But I still give you the praise. I still give you the praise. I sight a little devil. <laughs> but I know that you can see through all things. I'm leaning. I'm depending on you. I realize now that you had broken this law. Believe me. Now the young man. And my brother said, oh, gracious Father, now I'm open. I still feel it. Every now and then I can feel you moving on my heart. Now, Master, when it's my time to come, when my time to I don't know when, I don't know where, but I'm going to be ready. We're gonna be ready. I made preparation alone. I've been up. I've been down. But I'm holding on. For your unchanging hand. Then that's when you say, well done. Well done. I'll be working for him to say, well done. These are other blessings we ask in our son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
John chapter 3, verse 16. 16, I'm going to read 16 and 17. As I get ready to, to, to minister to you, I've been, we've been talking all this month about us reaching the lost. And I'm, let me say this again. If we don't do it, it's not going to get done. How many lives have been lost because Christians didn't do what they're supposed to do? How many people have died and went to hell because you didn't open your mouth? Hmm? How many folks might not even be in a hospital if you would have told them about the healing power of Jesus? Let me say this here. The preachers, we can't do it by ourselves. Amen. Amen. How many folks are living in poverty and you sitting there looking at them? You keep giving them $2. They don't need $2. They need the wisdom of God. You see them struggling financially. You won't even share the, the gospel, the, the truth that Jesus came to give you an abundant life. Hmm? How many folks are suffering mentally? I'm not talking about mental illness. I'm talking about just trouble in the mind. And we don't even take the time to minister the grace of God to them. And let them know that, baby, if you just keep your mind staying on Jesus, he'll keep you in perfect peace. How many people in the world are crumbling and the church just sit by and look at it? Shame on us. Amen. That's right. Help us. Amen. I'm telling you, there ain't no help coming. We are it. We are it. Ain't no help coming. When Jesus comes, he's coming to rapture. He ain't coming down here to do no work. His next uh, interaction with planet Earth is a rapture. It's not to come here to do no work. When he come back to do work, he gonna establish peace for a thousand years. But for all those souls that are lost, it's over with. Right. They just been held in chains until the, the final judgment. You say, well, I'm believing all that stuff. Baby, it's real. It's real whether you believe it or not. Church, we gotta get about that job. Amen. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Verse 17. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Amen. Today I'm going to talk to you about don't count nobody out. Right. Amen. You may be seated. Right. Two weeks ago I talked to you about the goodness of God draws me into repentance. Yes, sir. All right. And I shared with you how that it is God's goodness that brings men into relationship with him. And some folks still think you can preach the fire and brimstone, that's going to get it done. But that's not, that's not how you get it done. You get it done by preaching the goodness of God. Right. Amen. They already know the fire and brimstone message. They don't care about that no more. Mm -hmm. It's very, very, probably not a few people you're going to scare into heaven. Amen. So, it's God's goodness that leads people and draws people to Christ. Amen. It is his goodness. And in the new birth, he shared that goodness with us according to Galatians 5, 22 and 23. He gave us some of his goodness. So the goodness that God is, he's inside of us as believers. Amen. That goodness is in us. Say it with me. The goodness of God lives in me. And I am good because good is in me. Amen. There's some good in you. It's not because of you. It's because of the God in you. And it's that goodness that, like a magnet, that pulls people to you. Amen. That pulls people that want to pull and pull and draw on the wisdom of God that's in you. Then on last week, we talked about uh, that God can use anybody. And we referenced Elijah in the book of James, chapter 5, where the Bible says that Elijah was a man just like us, with a nature like ours. Amen. And we showed you, we compared and contrasted how Elijah and sometimes he was victorious but sometimes he was a chicken. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Yeah. And, and how he had issues and how everybody that God uses had issues. 
I'm telling you. So, and we drew that picture for you so you can understand that you don't have to be perfect for God to use you. All right. Some All of us right. we like to talk in our office about it a little bit earlier. Listen, well, we may not be perfect, but we showed up saved. Amen. Amen. The qualification to work for God is not to be perfect. The qualification is to be willing and ready and able. Amen. He don't need nobody perfect anyway. Amen. Because if you're perfect, that means you don't need no help and you got it all together. Amen. And so God can use you. I'm telling you, God can use you in a marvelous way. Amen. God can, God can use you to minister miracles to people. God can use you to minister his word to people. Amen. The preacher can't be everywhere. Come on. The deacons can't be everywhere. Facebook is not everywhere. There are going to be some times and places where you're going to be the only one there and you got to minister God's word to people. Amen. I'm telling you, and I'm, I'm deputizing everybody in here and out there today. You are authorized. Say it with me. I'm authorized. I'm authorized. Come on, say it one more time. I'm authorized. I'm authorized. I am authorized to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Well, what, 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 don't I need a license? No, you don't need no license. When Jesus died on the cross, he gave all of us a license. All right. A license is something me and come up with. Come on. But don't I have to be ordained? No, you ain't got to be ordained. Come on. Hmm? You are, you're authorized to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. You're authorized to pray for the sick. Amen. You're authorized to deal with demonic activity. You're authorized, watch it, just like he authorized Adam in the Garden of Eden. You're authorized to spread the paradise of God everywhere you go. Amen. Hallelujah. You're authorized. And so today I'm going to share with you about don't count nobody out. Let me give let me, you my thesis statement, as they call it. Here's my, I guess it's my thesis statement. Listen. There is no one that is outside of the boundaries of God's grace so long as they are alive. If they are alive, they can be saved. Amen. If they are alive, they can be saved. And man's greatest need is for salvation. It's not money, it's not houses, it's not cars, it's not uh, earthly relationships. Man's greatest need is for salvation. And that's why God said in John 3, 16, he loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten, the only son that he had. He sent it to die on an old rugged cross to save everybody. Yes. Amen. When Jesus got up from the grave, listen, he got up not just for me because I'm born again. He got up for the me that was me before I got born again. All right. All right. Hallelujah. He can save anybody. He said he loved the world. He gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. So everyone, as long as they are alive, they can be saved. So I'm telling you, don't count nobody out. See, well, I got this cousin. I know they're going to hell. Why are you going to put him in hell? He's going to bust hell wide open. How I many of y'all ever said that? Oh, yeah, I know you have. They don't they they get it together over there. They're going to bust hell wide open. Well, let me say this here. Before you go put somebody in hell, why don't you go over there before they get to busting and preach the gospel to them? Amen. Well, I tried that. Well, try it again, dog, don't it? They're going to bust their wide open. So watch this here. So here's three reasons why you can't count nobody out. I can't talk to us today. Because the Lord has been wearing me out about convincing us, the church, that we need to get out here and get folks saved. I'm telling you. Let me say this why. Because I ain't got much. Listen. The world is coming to an end. It's coming to an end. And I'm telling you, it's almost like we're on a fast track. I know we're not on a fast track, but it's like we're on a fast track. And we, I, I shared a few a couple months ago, is that I'm grateful to be alive to see the boundaries of it coming. Man, I'm just so excited to be alive during this hour, Reverend Furlow. I can see it coming. It's coming to an end. And just like uh, the, most everybody on planet Earth now, we never, you never thought you'd see something like this pandemic. Shut the whole thing down, go on. Can't go to work, can't go to church, can't go to school, can't do nothing. Shut the whole thing down. And that's something, I never thought I'd see something like that. I never thought in my lifetime I would see that man would have the capability to put a mark in my hand okay. so I can buy stuff. I just didn't think I was going to be able to see it. But, it, but it's here. 
I never, I never thought that some of the things that I see in the book of Revelations, I never thought that some of these things would be, be begin to manifest in my life. But it's manifested in our lifetime. And it's awesome. It's great. I mean, it's, it's great to be alive. To see it. To see the second coming of Jesus. The proof of the second coming of Jesus Christ. That no other generation has ever seen before. You say, well, this is some boring stuff. You know why it's boring? Because you're not in tune with the Lord. Hmm? But I'm glad to be here, Reverend Furlow. Three reasons why you can't count nobody out. Number one, 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 8 and 9. 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 8 and 9. I want to put it up on the screen because I want you to see it. 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 8 and 9. So, in 2 Peter chapter 3, but, but beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord, one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is as a day. Don't move. Watch this here. God don't do time like you and I do time. Okay. One day with God is like a thousand years and a thousand years. Is a day. I can talk about this all day, but I'm not going to do it. I better come before I get, to get on that. Go, go to verse number 9 before I get on. Amen. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. Now, as he's saying this, because we live in an age of we live in an age where people don't even believe God no more. Christians don't even believe God no more. It's amazing how many Christians that are just coming off the, the, the train tracks, so to speak. Forget the church, forget the Lord, forget Jesus. I'm going to do my own thing because ain't nothing going on anyway. Forget all that. I'm going to do my own thing. He's telling you the Lord is not slack concerning, concerning his promise. As some, as some people count slackness, but it's long-suffering toward us. People wonder why, why God ain't doing this, why God ain't doing that, why he, why he hadn't come back yet, why? Because he's long-suffering. He wants to give everybody an opportunity. Amen. Some of us, the only reason you're alive today is because God is trying to give you one more chance. All right. You got a number of your days. The only reason some of us are here is because God is giving you one more chance because a lot of us should have been dead and gone. Hallelujah. A lot of us should have been dead and gone, strung out on drugs and alcohol, laid up in a ditch somewhere, but God is long suffering and He want to give you one more chance. For the sinner, He want to give you one more chance to get to know Christ. For the saint, He want to give you one more chance to do the ministry that He called you to do, and some of us ain't done it yet. And you're sucking up His air, you're drinking His water, you're wearing His clothes, you're living in His house, you're driving His you're working on his job. Maybe you ain't got nothing. Everything you got, the Lord gave it to you. Because you came in this world with nothing, and you're going to go out of this world with nothing. And the only reason a lot of us are still here is because it's this God is long-suffering, trying to be patient with you and give you an opportunity to at least do one week of ministry before you die. But it's long-suffering toward us. Here we go. Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So here's reason, reason number one, or we don't want to count nobody out. Because God wants everybody saved. Don't never forget that. God wants everybody saved. Everybody. Watch this. It's like, well, you know, God always gets his way. That's a lie. Because God wants everybody saved. Now, unfortunately, some folks die unsaved. But know this, he wants everybody saved. It doesn't matter who they are. It doesn't matter what they're engaged in. Everybody in the penitentiary, he wants them saved. Everybody on skid row, he wants them saved. Everybody, no matter where they are, now, listen, he wants the Muslims saved. He wants Christians saved, because some Christians ain't saved. Uh-oh. He wants the Christians saved. He wants the Hindu saved. He wants the Buddhist saved. He wants the liar saved. He wants the pedophile saved. Come on, somebody. He wants the murderer saved. He wants the lesbian saved. Let's see, the lesbian, gay, bisexual, trans, and the they, they got so many letters, I can't keep up with it. He wants all of them saved. Amen. It doesn't matter what your letter is, God wants you saved. Amen. He wants everybody saved, and that has to be the mentality when you go out and do ministry. You can't go do ministry and look at somebody's condition and deny them the Christ because of their condition. Say that, say that. Because their condition is not a detriment to the power of Christ. Amen. So get these, these rose-colored glass 
test of our eyes and realize that it is the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ that Paul said that brings salvation. Amen. Don't worry about their condition. You go out and you preach the gospel in two. That's reason number one. Reason number two, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse number 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse number 9. The second reason why we can't count nobody out. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse number 9. And he said to me, Paul had a glory in the flesh. How many of y'all know that story? Paul had a thorn in the flesh. I'm not going to go into what the thorn was. I, I'm just not going to go there. And he said to me, my grace, somebody say grace. Yes. My grace is sufficient for you. This is what Jesus talking to Paul. For my strength is made perfect in your weakness. All right. All Therefore, right. most gladly will I rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Now, don't take the scripture down. Paul had a thorn in the flesh. And the Bible says he besought the Lord three times about it, and the Lord didn't remove the thorn, but we know in the Bible, if you read it and study it out, he really did. He eventually, it was removed. So, in the middle of that, Jesus told him, my grace, my undeserved favor, is sufficient for you. He was telling Paul, I know you got an issue, but I got a grace to deal with your issue. I know you got problem. But I got a grace to deal with your problem. I know you're not perfect. But I got a grace to deal with your not being perfect. What's my second point? My second point is why you don't want to count my body out is because whatever it is, God got a grace for it. Y'all don't want to clap like that. Amen. Whatever it is, God has a grace for. What does that mean, Reverend? That means this here. It, I said a few minutes ago. It doesn't matter what they're going through. God has a grace to get them out of it. Yes. They might be a liar. They might be a murderer. They might be a thief. They might be a crook. Listen again. God specializes yes. in people that's got problems. That whatever they're going through, just like got a grace to snatch them out of it. Yes. Yes. God has a mercy to pull them through. Oh, 
Pride says I got this. Pride says I don't need the will. Pride says I don't need Jesus. Pride looks at what was wrong with other folks, but don't look at your own self. Pride don't need no grace. You know why pride don't need no grace? Because pride ain't gonna give no grace. But hallelujah, I know for my own self that if it had not been good God, if it had Don't give up on cutting Reggie 
Send Jesus to pay for it and keep on sending it. Let me get out of here. He did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through that same son might be saved. I'm telling you, the Lord wants you saved. That's it. He wants you saved. All of y'all, he wants you saved. This is what I'm encouraging you today. If you don't know Christ, in a pardoning of your sin. What does that mean? That means you know you got issues, but I got some grace from God to cover my mess. How many of y'all can be a witness that that's how you got to live? That's it. There's no other way to live. He said, I know I got issues, but I got a grace from God to cover my sins. Stand on your feet. And it's the grace of God, hallelujah, the goodness of God that has brought me this far. Amen. That's how we approach the world. That's how you don't count nobody out. Now, if you know they're crook, don't set your wallet out in front of them. I mean, let's be real. He didn't ask you to do that. Put your wallet up, they ain't gonna preach Jesus. Matter of fact, if you know me a crook, I might say, I'm saying, Lord, let me put my wallet up. I'm gonna put my wallet up, then I know I preach now. I'm not gonna leave my fitness sitting out on the counter, I know they're a, a, just a habitual thief. Huh? So, we come to God through Jesus Christ. That's how we come to God. We come to God naked and ashamed. Recognize that we need a Savior. And we tell the Lord, Lord, I believe that Jesus died for my sin. And that you rose him from the grave after three days. And you know what? I believe that from my heart. The heart is so important. The heart is just the center of your being. It is the conviction center of, of your whole existence. It is the voice of your, your conscience is the voice of your inner man. Amen. Amen. You do it from your heart. Yes, you do. Hallelujah. You do it with conviction, recognizing God's grace. And you know what the Bible says? You confess the Lord Jesus with your mouth and believe in your heart with full conviction that God raised him from the dead. Yes. The Bible says that he's going to save you. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. He's going to save you. Isn't that good news? Yes. Yes. Amen. And what I love about it is he sends the Holy Spirit yes. Yes. into your life to yes. immediate God. And now your life. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's the business of your life is following the voice of the Spirit. You read God's Word and change in your mind to get in line with that voice. It's, it's just that simple. If you don't know Christ, maybe you're here in the building, you don't know Christ, you need to reconnect with church, you need to come back to church, maybe you've been vaccinated or whatever, it doesn't matter with the case. Who cares? Let's stop that stuff. Amen. Amen. You can play like confident though. I know the music ain't preaching, shut up. <laughs> Who cares why somebody comes? Who got time to sit around and talk about Johnny coming to the Lord? I mean, how many people come to the Lord and you sitting there like, yeah, shame on you. If you're here and you don't know Christ, you need to reconnect, you want to be a part of this church, maybe you, you need to give your life to the Lord. We got folks over here by the, left, by the door to my left, they're going to minister to you. Amen. If you're out there, if you don't know Christ, send us a message on this Facebook page. We'll have somebody to reach out to you. But I'm going to pray with you real quick. Everybody, let's pray in the name of Jesus. Pray the prayer with me. Father, I confess that I come short of your word. And you said all have sinned and come short of your glory. So God, I come to you in humble submission. And I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. He's the Son of God. That you sent him to die on the cross for my sin. I believe that he died. I also believe that he got up. And I believe one day he's coming back. I believe all of that, Lord, from my heart. And because you said I really believe it from my heart that you will save me, I confess now that I am saved yes. by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. If you pray that prayer, send us a message. Somebody will call you back and we'll minister the goodness of God to you. We got to go. We'll see you this Wednesday night. Say it with me. We walk by Y'all not loud enough. They can't hear y'all. We walk by. Hey. One more time. We walk by. Hey. And not by. Hey. God don't.